You're watching CNA Heroes. Here's Lisa Sweet. Hello, and welcome to another edition of CNA Heroes. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of the National Association of Healthcare Assistants, or NACA for short. In today's busy environment, so many people are so caught up in their own world, they notice little else. We've all seen them. People on their phones or texting on their devices, oblivious to anything around them. And then there are some people who stay in their own bubble. They mind their own business because they don't want to get involved in any goings on out of fear. Fear for their personal safety, fear of a lawsuit, fear of not being capable. Thankfully, today's CNA hero is not one of those people. A big shout out to the Lincoln Journal Star for initially publishing this story. It was a fall Sunday, late morning in November 2019 in Lincoln, Nebraska. Gina Sanderson Easterling had arrived home shortly before noon. There's a skate park, Peter Pan Park as it's called, directly across from her house and she frequently glances at the activities in the park when she's outside. Today was no different. Gina got out of her car and glanced over to a group of teenage boys standing around another boy on the ground who struggled to get up and then fell back down to the ground. She didn't think twice about what to do. Luckily, Gina had gone back to school just a year earlier and gotten her CNA. Gina said, I didn't question myself. I didn't hesitate. I went for it. I went over there. Her CNA training included first aid and CPR, although she had never had to use it until now. As Gina ran to the teenager, she saw blood had soaked his pants and was seeping down the sidewalk. His lips had turned a light blue and Gina knew the wound that he had was close to his femoral artery. Gina later learned he had been riding a bike and up and down the ramps when he lost control and fell and the bike handlebars gouged the inside of his right leg. She told the boys she was a certified nursing assistant and that she was there to help. She said a prayer out loud and asked the wounded boy his name and his age. Julian Estrada, he said, 15 years old. She knew the boy was seriously wounded. Julian's friends had already called 911. She bent down to her knees and held pressure on the wound barehanded. Gina tried to keep Julian talking as he drifted in and out of consciousness. She said, I just kept on reassuring him that everything would be fine and that help was on the way. After hearing the sirens in the distance, help did arrive. The paramedics told Gina to keep pressure on the wound while they applied the tourniquet, then got Julian on the stretcher. Julian looked at her then and told her he was having trouble breathing. That scared her the most, she said. Gina went back to her house after the ambulance left. She changed her blood-soaked clothes and headed for the hospital. I had to, she said. I had to go to the hospital. I knew I had to come here. I couldn't go to bed not knowing if he was going to make it or not. At the emergency room, Gina learned that Julian's family was with the chaplain. Right then and there, she said, my heart broke and I assumed the worst. But a police officer who had been at the park and saw her told Julian's family and one of Julian's brothers came out to get her. They waited together until Julian, a sophomore at Northeast High School with his twin brother, came out of surgery. The handlebars of the bicycle had hit a vein but narrowly missed the femoral artery. Doctors had to use a portion of another vein to repair the torn and broken one. They gave him 20 
units of blood. He had a breathing tube and he was in a medically induced coma, but he was expected to live. Gina stayed. She watched Julian while his mom slept and rested, and about 3.30 a.m., he started to wake up. He motioned for his phone, got on Snapchat, and texted a message because he couldn't talk due to the breathing tube. He motioned Gina to his bedside. She said, he texted me, thank you for saving my life. Then he asked for a hug. Doctors told Julian's mom that people don't usually survive such injuries, that the actions of the stranger had likely saved Julian's life. Later on Monday, as his condition quickly improved, doctors removed the breathing tube and Julian began talking. He was able to get out of bed and walk. He wanted a Sprite and a steady stream of friends came by to visit. Julian's mother said, today he's just like my old son with one difference. Julian has a guardian angel, she said, and her name is Gina. Gina Sanderson Easterling, you are such a great example for all of us to live by. As a mother, I know the magnitude of your actions. You saved a young man's life, giving him back to his mother and his family. Thank you for your courage and your generosity. Everyone, please join me today and honoring the very deserving Gina Sanderson Easterling CNA Hero.